this is the Adrian now. You have overcome everything to be where you are today and in, you know, your rights, you are, you know, you have achieved, you know, your, your status in music and, you know, you are a head of school in, in the university as well. But let, let me bring you back to the early days. What was the most painful thing where kids come up to you and they would, they would probably say things that are really horrible? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things was just physical violence. I remember like uh, when I was like in grade school, like there are these like little crab apples that fell off the trees during the fall time. And somehow like these boys just got the idea like it'd be just fun to like throw them at people. Uh, and I think that I was certainly a target of that as well. Um, and, and things like, you know, people just trying to kick you or like uh, put you down verbally and things like that. It was um, hard because I wasn't able, I was a very shy kid as well. And I wasn't able to speak up for myself from the inside. So they didn't know me. So all they saw was my body and how I looked. And that was scary and dangerous in some way, even though they thought it was just like, oh, let's just have fun and like, you know, bully in the end. I think that was um, extremely, um, yeah, painful in the sense that it kept me from really um, believing in myself, first of all, but it also kept me from believing in other people as well. It could, and I said, why bother trying to get to know people if that's all they're going to do in the end? I think that um, having great parents helped though, because every single time that something like this would happen, I was always able to come back to a refuge of unconditional love. And, and that's hard because you have the world around you and then you have like the world where you understand that you're safe and, and this person, regardless of what you believe you've been taught of what your inadequacies are, uh, that this person, despite that, even if they don't exist, <laughs> despite whatever you're imagining is, uh, that person's still there. And I think that is one of the advantages, um, interestingly, about like growing up with uh, this type of pain or, or difference, is that you understand what it is when someone fully accepts you, uh, not only parents, but also friends and teachers as well, because it takes a leap in these people, uh, sometimes it's natural uh, for like a parent to do it, but for a stranger to do that, or someone who um, just doesn't know all the aspects of your inner personality, but is willing to give and try. Uh, these people, uh, through making that leap, they've already shown the type of people they are. So we're always a combination of people who have treated us the worst and people who have treated us the best. And then you have to make a choice of what your outlook will be. Are all people inherently fearful and bad or like willing to just exclude others? Or is it just that they haven't seen the aspect of love in their own lives and they just don't understand, it's like a language. So on the other hand, do you choose then? People who have had that nurturing in their lives, like I think my grandma, for instance, was a huge influence on my mom in terms of accepting me uh, for who I was as well. Uh, and, and how do you continue paying that forward uh, through that choice that you make? Because it's not only saying, oh, this is a good person, this is a good person, but you have to use whatever voice you have and amplify it in the way that creates social impact. And that can happen in so many different ways. It could happen just in uh, the small things that you do for other people to just be genuinely interested about themselves or them than yourself, for instance. To be able to be in a position of helping and giving and sacrificing of yourself. And sometimes it's having the courage to say, this is what I believe in and this is where I need help. And I'm going to trust that asking for help is not an indication of weakness. It's actually an uh, indication of strength and to speak fear all the time. I think that um, one thing I learned is that when things are said, they come out of the darkness and they lose their power as well. And that's a hard thing to, to be able to confront. Um, it's something that I've learned to practice uh, in many different situations. Like we talk about like, you know, depression that's happening 
uh, within students and, and people in general. And I think that uh, for me, the idea of like statement and then and is like sort of an important thing. So if, say for instance, like this is a real struggle and there are people who still believe in me. Uh, so to acknowledge two truths rather than saying like, um, things are really horrible because I don't have enough money to fulfill a project, but maybe I'll get something in the future. It's and the other truth is that as I continue moving forward with my ideas, uh, there are always going to be potential sources of revenue to be able to encourage um, to encourage from others because of the, the passion and belief that you have in what you do as well. Uh, so I think that depression in general is, is very much, I know that there is a, a biological and neurochemical aspect to it for sure. I think that the, the way to continue uh, working at it is just to realize that truth is not necessarily only negative, that truth has two edges to it and that you have to practice just seeing the other side because it's just as truthful and actually the only useful side because nothing happens when you uh, think negatively. It's one of those weird things about human beings. It's like you would think we would have evolved out of this. It's like the idea of worrying about things you can't control in the end, but you can't because it's just, I guess, our, our instinct. Maybe this is, again, why we have such an opportunity for growth as well because uh, without that struggle, without that fear, where is that accomplishment as well? It makes life a bit interesting. Thank you.